So in this video we're going to do example 7, example 8 and example 9. So example 7 we're going to try to, to figure out whether an event is independent or not. So um, we started off by saying that if an event is independent, if events are independent then we can use the product formula, right? And so, so that's one of the important things, but first you have to establish whether the event is independent at all. So, um, let's say, um, let's say in a, in a, we'll start with this one here, just the bird and the, and the tree, right? And so, so in other words, let's say the probability that a bird will catch a worm in a particular area of forest in, um, a particular hour, is um, 50 percent. I just made that up. And the probability that a tree will fall um, is um, very small, let's say 1 percent. Now these events are independent, like this does not affect this. Whether a bird catches the worm or not is not going to affect where the tree falls and vice versa. The tree falling is not going to affect whether the bird a bird catches a worm or not. And so we could say we can use the product formula P of A times uh, the probability of the first event times probability of the second is the probability that both will happen, which that would be 50 percent, you know, times 1 percent which would give you one half of a percent, right? So, a silly example, but just trying to make the point. Um, whether an event is independent or not comes up a lot in health, right? So, always, a always asking things like, well, are we sure that smoking causes cancer? Are we sure that this is good for your health or not? So, here's a link to a study that, that did prove um, for, for reals that eating seven servings of fruit or vegetables each day at least results in improved mental health and that's um, that's allowing for um, all sorts of other um, influences and um, indications and so so this has been shown um, so so this does affect this so therefore these events are in fact dependent okay so, so we can't use a product formula with these two events. So let's say the product, um, the probability of somebody eating at least seven fruits or vegetables a day is um, ten percent. Not many people do that. And the probability of somebody having good mental health, um, on average, I'm just making. I have no idea. I'm just making this up. I imagine it is. Um, I don't know, I'm going to guess 30%, right? Um, we can't just multiply these, right? Because these are dependent events, okay? Um, so, so the, the bird and the, the bird catch the worm and the tree fall in the woods, these were independent. One does not affect the other. Um, here's another one. You're under six feet tall, you like to swim. Are they dependent or independent events? What do you think? Dependent events or independent events? Or attributes. Dependent or independent attributes, you could say, as well. So these are independent, wouldn't they? I can't see any reason, independent, why one would affect the other. What You like to swim. How would that make you taller? Or, or, or under six feet tall. You're under six feet tall. How would that make you like to swim, right? Like, do tall people not like to swim or something? I've never heard of that. So these are independent events, right? How about this one? Your vehicle crashes, you text while driving. Are those events dependent or independent? So we would probably say those events are dependent, right? So uh, one study here shows that you're 23 times... Ah, more likely to crash while texting. Okay, um, and lots of other studies show all sorts of things. So these are definitely dependent events. I mean, um, you're more likely to crash if um, you're texting while you drive. So the probability of crashing goes up depending on this, right? So these events are not 
um, independent or dependent events. And here is one: you're involved in a fatal car crash. You live in Montana. Are those attributes dependent or independent? Okay, so these are actually, believe it or not, what do you think? Have you any idea? Take a guess. So I hope you've taken a guess. So these are actually dependent. And believe it or not, different states have different likelihoods of being involved in a fatal car crash. And, and, and this study shows that Montana is the most likely, most likely to die in a car crash in Montana than any other state. All right, so they're dependent events. So, I mean, one way to kind of apply this is, look, you know, um, if you pick a person at random and you want to you want to figure out probably they'll die in a car crash, you pick a person at random, or, or if you're doing a study, uh, you've got to take into account where people live because depending on the state, the, the roads are safer or they have um, safer drivers or, or whatever, right? Um, or 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 more people using public transport, less people using public transport, or um, or younger people driving. And there's all sorts of reasons why why uh, a state can the the, the state uh, groups of people live to, um, changes um, um, likelihoods of different 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 things about about them. So, and then uh, here's my favorite. Event A, the Irish rugby team will win a game against Australia. Okay, so that's, you know, on average, the probability of that happening might be, oh, I don't know, something like 30% or maybe a little bit more these days. Uh, event B, it will rain heavily during the game. Probability of that happening might be, even in Ireland, rain heavily maybe 25 percent but the point is are these events dependent or independent right so these events are definitely dependent because if it rains heavily then the probability of the Irish rugby team winning the game goes up a lot I mean it might be more like the probability that we will win that Irish rugby team will given so, so, and this comes comes to conditional probability, which we looked at earlier. Given that, given that B has happened, the probability that we'll win the game is probably more like sixty percent. We probably got to double our chances, um, and, and so on, right? And so these are definitely dependent events. So we can't just um, use a product rule to figure out if we'll win in the rain. Okay, so, um, so there we go. Um, example 8, snow and school. See if you can figure this one out. There is a 20% chance of heavy snow tomorrow. On average, school is cancelled 4 days out of 180 days each year. What is the probability of the kids staying home for a snow day? Uh, please, uh, tomorrow, I meant to say. That, you know, tomorrow. Okay, so it's 20% chance of heavy snow tomorrow. On average, school is cancelled four days out of 180 each year. What's the probability of the kids staying home for a snow day tomorrow? Please press pause on the video and try that one yourself. Okay, I hope you've tried, you've pressed pause and, and you've tried it. So I'm going to do it now. And the answer is that... Um, the answer is probably in this area about uh, 20%. That's the answer, right? Why is that? Because if there's heavy snow, they'll probably stay home from school, right? And this, this part doesn't matter at all. Because these events, th this event, school is cancelled, and, and heavy snow, these are dependent, okay? School is can school being cancelled oftentimes does depend on whether or not there's heavy snow. Okay, so um, so the the wrong way of doing this 
would be to go, and we'll just do it for fun, the, the wrong way would be to use the product property without first checking for whether events are, are independent or not. Uh, so like 4 out of 180 is 0 0.222. So, um, well, we could just do, so probability of, of event A is 20%. And probability of event B, stay, uh, school is cancelled is four so is four out of one hundred and eighty. So twenty percent is zero point two, and multiply that by four out of one hundred and eighty to get the probability that it will um, there'll be heavy snow and they'll stay home from school. So or let's see, clear zero point two times four out of one eighty. Okay. 0 0.0044 etc or approximately 0 0.44 percent something like that right so 0 0.44 percent would be the incorrect answer right whereas about 20 percent is probably more likely although we don't know for sure okay because these events are dependent all right so the the heavy snow increases the likelihood of school being cancelled right so this probability goes up right so these are dependent events and that's why we can't use the product properly we shouldn't have used it because the events are dependent not independent right and so that so that's an obvious example this one is a little bit murky but let's see what you think of this a basketball player has scored 54 out of 79 free throws so far this season what is her free throw percentage? Calculate that free throw percentage. Oh, I just get 54 out of 79, right? So that's 0 0.6835 and so on. I'm just going to say that's about 68%, okay? Approximately, right? Are consecutive free throws independent events? Can we use the product formula? What do you think? So part B, are they independent events? In other words, if you're taking free throws one after the other, is the probability of each free throw 68%? 68% for a free throw and then take it in, throwing a basketball into a hoop and then take another shot with the basketball is that also 68 percent and then the next shot is also 68 percent and the next shot is also 68 percent does scoring affect the the likelihood of scoring the next time or is each shot exactly about or as a basketball player are you are is is a person more likely to um are they going to are they going to uh, be better as they score more or score less or what? And that's a, it's a difficult one to answer because maybe they they could be on a roll, right? And and they they're they're in form and and they're more likely to score in each shot. So maybe their their um, likelihood is more like eighty percent, eighty percent, eighty percent, or maybe um, if they're scoring. That they might start to get nervous that they're going to miss the next one. I don't know. It just depends on the person, and and then their their likelihood might drop down to forty percent. Who knows, right? So it's hard to know if it's independent. But um, so this one's this one's hard to work out. But uh, let's just say that just just for fun, we'll just say that they are right. And so imagine they are. So imagine you have a a basketball player that that. Uh, for that particular player that you know they, they're pretty consistent and so whether they've they've scored the previous shot or or not that you know they're just as likely to get the next one because they're just sticking to their form and 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 doing their best each time so what is the probability that this player scores two free throws in a row what do you think so probability of of scoring times probability of scoring, right? So we'll just imagine they're independent, like I said, and in that case it would be 68% or 0 0.68 times 
times 0 0.68, right? And that would give us the, um, that would give the answer to C, right? Or even better, it was, what was it, 54 out of 79, right? Which is that number. I'm just going to hit the squared button on my calculator. See that? Answer squared. And that'll give me more accurate. Or I could do, um, once I have that, I could do to the power of the little hat button 2, right? And that would give me, again, 0 0.467 or about about 0 0.47 or about what's that as to the, to the nearest percentage to the nearest percentage it's about 47 percent isn't it right so part D now press pause on the video and do part D yourself what is the probability she scores 10 free throws in a row Did you press pause and try it? So again, we're going to assume this This is a pretty consistent basketball player and her previous shots is, are not affecting her chances of getting the next one, whether she, she scores or not. And so just imagine that each free throw, um, she has the same chance of getting it, right? So we can use the product property, so about a 68% chance each time, right? So multiply 0 0.68 by itself 10 times, that's the same as going 0 0.68 to the power of what? To the power of 10. Or to be more accurate, we should do, in fact, the 54 over 79 and then to the power of 10 in the calculator. That would be more accurate, wouldn't it? 54 over 79 to the power of 10, right? So I'll do parentheses, 54 over 79 to the power of 10. And that gives me 0 0.02222. Give me that as a percentage rounded to the nearest percent. So move the decimal point over two spots to the right. It's about 2.2. .2. Round to the nearest percent. That's about 2%, right? So if this is the basketball's uh, player's free throw percentage, then to get 10 shots, 10 free throws in a row, Let's say they yeah, had ten shots in the game or something. Chances of getting them all in would be two percent. And just I'll just give you one more. What if what if uh what if we had a basketball player with a free throw uh percentage that was top of the NBA, something like um something like eighty eight percent, okay? What would the um chances of getting ten free throws be now? So calculate that probability of 10 free throws scored in a row. Okay, did you try it? So I'll help you right now. So, so if it was 88%, it'd be, it'd be just 0 0.88 to the power of 10, right? Or in a calculator, 0 0.88 to the power of 10 because it's 0 0.88 times itself 10 times right round that to the nearest percentage so move the decimal point over two spots and you get about 27.8 so just round that up it's about 20 8 percent right which is interesting so um, a seemingly small improvement on the individual shot from 68% to 88% results in a uh, much more likelihood of getting all 10 shots in in a row, right?